Now let's preview tonight's top five finalists. 53-year-old Ski Faremski of nearby Conroe, Texas, will start from the number five position in search of his first PBA title since 1974. His opponent in the opening match will be five-time PBA champion Les Schisler of Brighton, Colorado. Qualifying in the middle of the pack this week and looking for his first ever PBA championship is talented Billy Gom of Akron, Ohio. John Handegard, a finalist just two weeks ago in St. Charles, has nailed down the runner-up position, while the PBA's most prolific champion, Earl Anthony, will need to win just one game, the title match, in order to notch his 44th career PBA title. Welcome everyone to Stadium Bowl, located in Houston, Texas, for tonight's championship round finals of the $80,000 Hammer PBA Senior Open. Hi everybody, I'm Denny Schreiner and welcome to Stadium Bowl, located just across the street from the Houston Astrodome here in Houston, Texas. Working with me once again here this evening is three-time Firestone Tournament of Champions champ and PBA Hall of Famer, Mike Durbin. And Michael, one thing is for sure, in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, there's a constant on the PBA Tour. It's the fact that Earl Anthony continues to lead tournaments. Well, it's nice that some things do remain constant and that Earl leads tournaments certainly is one of them. He dominated the National Tour when he was on the National Tour and led over 50 tournaments. Since he's become a senior, this is the third time that he's led a tournament. He's won from the top spot twice already. Maybe it'll be number three tonight. One of the local favorites, Ski Ferensky, has qualified in the number five position. The local fans will be rooting him on this evening. Well, they rooted him on last year. He made the championship round at the Hammer Open last year in Texas City. His first opponent is going to be a five-time champion, Les Sisler from Brighton, Colorado. And the winner of that match is going to take on a good friend of yours. That's right, Billy Gom out of Akron, Ohio, one of the finest players ever to come out of Northeastern Ohio. And he is looking for his first ever PBA championship here this evening. And the man we're all still waiting to see come to the forefront is John Handegard, our number two seed. Well, it's obvious that John has talent. He's made the top 24 12 straight times. But in the championship round, his record is a dismal 1-8. and eight. The question remains, can John Handegard relax tonight, let his talent come through, and win his first PBA title? All right, well, why don't you just relax and sit back and enjoy the $80,000 Hammer PBA Senior Open. We'll be back with match number one featuring Ski Fremsky and Les Schischler, the PBA Tour on ESPN, coming up next. We're here at an athletic shoe store to see people's reactions to this sneaker phone from Sports Illustrated. Now, the only thing is, we're not going to show it to them. We're going to let them discover it for themselves. Come on. Go ahead. You take it up. Is anybody there? Hello? Uh, sneaker ringing. <laughs> I've never saw anything like that. Did they all ring? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, get a load of this. <laughs> come here, come here, look at this. I can't believe it. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> a sneaker phone, that's great. Sports Illustrated presents the sneaker phone. It's yours free with your paid subscription to SI. Hello, Chief. This is Park. <laughs> oh, honey, honey. You won't believe where I'm calling from. <laughs> The Sports Illustrated sneaker phone works just like a regular phone. It has push-button dialing, mute button, automatic redial, an on-off switch, and of course it plugs into a standard jack. <laughs> this is a sneaker phone? <laughs> it's great. You like that? Yeah, how much? It's free. Free? No. <laughs> the Sports Illustrated sneaker phone is yours free. Just subscribe to 30 issues of SI for three low monthly installments of only $14.97. That's over 45% off the cover price. So call the toll-free number on the screen now. Of course, the subscription includes the NFL and NBA previews, the year-end double issue, the revealing 1991 swimsuit issue, and the free sneaker phone. It's free? Free. They're free. They're free. Fantastic. Which we mean it's free. It's free. 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 You pull my leg. I will pull your leg. Ready. You heard it here first. Everybody loves the sneaker phone from Sports Illustrated. And so will you. Call now to subscribe to Sports Illustrated at over 45% off the cover price and get the sneaker phone free. Hello? <laughs> That's great! <laughs> Back at Stadium Bowl in Houston, Texas. The opening match of the $80,000 Hammer PBA Senior Open. Ski Faremski will start in the left-hand lane. Championship pair this week, lanes 57 and 58. I found it interesting. Uh, Ski said that the, uh, the left lane or the right lane looked more for him, and the right-hander said that the left lane looked more for him. So. 
the gate with a light shot on 57, and Ski is down on one knee, Michael, with the opening shot. He was doing that all week long. He was the qualifying leader here. He averaged 224 for his first 18 games. Tell you what, he averaged 241.6 for his opening six games. Kistler's first effort just kind of takes the 5-10 out to rather blasé about the opening if shot. If you want to see a simple game, Les Sisler is the, the epitome of the simple game. Four steps, he pushes and steps right at the same time, lets it down right in time, right there, right in time, right, head steady, winds up way behind the foul line, very little slide, used to get down a little bit more in his younger years. Repeats one shot after another, and uh, if you get the right ball reaction, that's all you ever try and do. This time it's the week 10 on lane 57. Very moderate to slow speed. Very good spare shooter for the most part. I put the kiss of death on him right now. But <laughs> generally, he doesn't miss any spares. Won uh, his second PBA championship right here in Houston back in 1964. Fair up in the second. And now Kerensky will get his first good look at uh, the right-hand lane, lane 58. We've got two guys here that have gone uh, quite a while since they've won a PBA title. Ski, I think it's been since 1974. And Les, it's been since 1967. So, As Mike mentioned in the open, Ski Kerensky qualifying for the championship round a year ago in this tournament, which was held in Texas City. Trying to come out and double off the bat, and he does. And uh, he runs this one right back into the set. I wonder if uh, Ski will have enough energy to win two or three games tonight. Yeah, if he keeps running them out like that, it's going to be, uh, he goes five games, five-step approach all the way to the end of the approach. Pushes it out, pretty free swing. Has real quick feet, shoulder high back swing there. And a nice long slide. Elbow breaks a little bit on that shot. This is by Barbara. Is she meditating or? Uh, yeah, she's not looking on at this point. Uh, Going to wait and listen, hopefully, for that X on the left-hand lane. One of the more consistent players when he was on the national tour full-time. Won tournaments in five consecutive years. And oh, there it is. Better late than never. Well. As he comes in light, watch the hip hit. We'll miss the three. Now he's got the three, five, six. The six kind of turns around, and the rack gets in the way there, but the bottom of the six hit the three, and it fell the other way. Schiffler right back, shakes up the rack on the right-hand lane, and uh, he comes back with a strike of his own. And he got a very late break on that seven pin going down with the uh, five pin knocking down with the uh, seven. Schiffler down 20. At this stage, early on, Kremski opens with the first three. Keep in mind, Billy Gom of Akron, Ohio, is our number three seed. John Handegard, number two. And on top of the field this week, as he has done so many times throughout his illustrious career, the Doomsday Stroking Machine, Earl Anthony. Schistler comes back with a double of his own, cuts the lead to 10. So it's Schisler and Paremski here in game number one of the $80,000 Hammer PBA Senior Open. We'll be back with more of game number one after this. Growing up outside of Philly with my two brothers, we each had our favorite team. Judd's was the Phillies, Gordy's was the Flyers, but mine was the Philadelphia Eagles. I'd live for Sunday and imagine that someday I could play for the green and silver. But somehow, a skinny kid with glasses named Oral Leonard Hershey's of the Ford just wasn't meant for the NFL. So I had to find something else to do. Oral Hershiser, not your everyday fan. For Team NFL merchandise, for your catalog, call 1-800-USA-FOR-NFL. Hey, a guy can dream, can he? Can't test your sports trivia knowledge? You can win big money. Just answer six questions on sports trivia. Answer all six correctly and win $500. So just do it. Call the 900 number on your screen now. And you must call from a touchtone phone. Answer six questions and win $500. The call is just $2 a minute. You must be 18 years or older to play. Call anytime and win $500. That's right, $500. Test your sports trivia knowledge. Call now. Wednesday night. 
Bo Jackson and the Royals try to fight their way back into the race against the Orioles. Or in some areas, see the Athletics face the Twins. Wednesday night, live on ESPN. Well, thus far, we've had seven shots in game number one. Six of the seven have been strikes, and Fremsky is perfect through three. But actually, Sisler looks like he's got the better line in the pocket to me. Ski with a little more room. Ball comes back flush, and uh, another pirouette for Ski Fremsky, who starts with the first four. He's a lot of energy right away, isn't he? He rolled that out way wide. Comes roaring back into the one-two pocket. And they all fall down. Is it going to hold? Yeah. <laughs> the spectator stands up in the back there. <laughs> Plenty of Karemski fans on hand here this evening. The old FF, huh? Yep. Probably be frenzied fans if he wins this one. He's hoping they're not forgetful fans. Shakes him loose one more time, and Steve Faremski has started with a five-bagger here in game number one. And put the pressure on Sisler, who's trailing now by 30 pins, and really has thrown every ball very well. Interesting note, Faremski took 22 seconds to get that shot off in the fifth. Schisler right back up the track. Lester has no problem whatsoever with the right hand leg. And we should mention that the rule is 25 seconds. If he exceeds, there's Jack Biondolo, the first player to bowl 300 on national TV. Did it at the 1967 Firestone Tournament of Champions, and he did it against this man, Les Sisler. And, of course, the real trivia question there in that whole flowing commentary is who did Biondolo beat in his next match en route to getting to the title. I don't know, some some skinny guy from California. An obscure rookie named Mike Durbin. But back to the uh, topic. His sister goes for four in a row. Gets it high. Is he going to get a break? Boy, it hit it. Broke up the split. Anyway, if they go over 25 seconds, then the rule on the senior tour is they, there is no warning. They are penalized five pins for every violation. I wonder if Ski realizes how close he was to the 25-second clock. Of course, I guess the more strikes in a row, the more pressure, the more time you would take. But see, the time starts from the time that Sister steps off the approach. So the clock is running right now. All that wiping the ball, the clock is, is ticking away. He could be going over it. He's got to be close. He's got to be close. I'll tell you what. Finally starts his approach, swings it wide one more time, and he has a half dozen. He wants a re-rack. How does the time affect that? All right, that gets a restart on the clock. So the time doesn't figure in right now. As we see the replay of his sixth strike in a row. Didn't say that right. Sixth <laughs> strike in a row. <laughs> he has started uh, running him out from the get-go. The very first shot. The very first shot, that's right. Well, of course, Ski certainly no stranger to shooting very big scores in front of a national television audience. Uh, of course, back at the showboat in Las Vegas, put together games of 265, 267, and 276, an 807 series. Which was a record at the time. Mm -hmm. Held up for many years. Going for seven. Wow, he looked good. Karemski with the first seven here in the opening match. 41 pin lead and uh, might be the second time that Schisler has to stare down a 300 <laughs> game. Might be. <laughs> oh, history does repeat itself, Michael. Dicing the rack and Les has to feel like uh, he's a marked man here this evening. Well, he's not out of this game yet.
Les still can strike out for a potential score of 259. So he's not out of this yet. But he is down 41 pitch. Mm -hmm. As we enter the eighth frame. This is a bust. Once again, high on the left-hand lane, and Schistler pays the price for that offering as he leaves his first split of the, of the and, match. And the right-hander said that the left-hand lane hooked more than the right. So there, I mean, that soft speed, the ball just uh, rolled up there high. A little bit firmer speed, and that ball would have held pocket. Career earnings in excess of $200,000 gives it a run. But Schistler opens up. And uh, the door now swung wide open for Ski Ferensky, who has the first seven, now leads by 53 pins, and uh, he's already thinking about game number two. Well, he better think about that clock. He's uh, going to cost himself five pins if he doesn't get going there. Pin stands for Remsky with an excellent opening effort, but uh, I have a feeling that uh, he is awfully close, and uh, he's just now been told, I think, that uh, 25. An insurance policy. At the seventh in, he's stuck. But converts it nevertheless. So after starting with the first seven, the seven pin stands. So we've been informed that he did exceed the 25 second clock, which was costing five pins. He's going at a 259 pace and has the match well in hand. So it doesn't seem that it would be an expensive thing for him. And he takes far less time with that one. It gets the same result. <laughs> well, we've seen the first of the five-pin fines then. Basically, the same thing as a, a penalty in golf for slow play. Only there's no warning out here in the PBA Senior Tour. If you exceed 25 seconds, you lose five pins. Less coming in light and leaving the seventh in, just fin finishing it out. He seems to have a penchant for having these big scores <laughs> shot at him on national television. Brings out the best in his opponents. Nevertheless, a fifth place finish here for Less. Made four of five finals, cashed four of five times in the previous five senior events that he has participated in. So, very consistent player through the years, a winner of an all star and five other PBA championships. Less if he strikes out in the 10th, we'll finish with a 217. Rebski already has 229 minus 5, 224, so the match is over. He's I finishing to... out the string. All right, on the scoring then, as, as we will see the score graphically shown here, we'll see what he, in fact, shot for the game, and we just subtract five from that? We just subtract five from that is correct. Okay. There's the adjustment and even make on lane 57. A little more speed, perhaps, and uh, so a strike for Les Schisler. Let's too little too late I don't think Les knows it's the 10th frame they just told me did you ever know what frame you were in Mike when I always knew what frame I was in Dan. <laughs> and how many pins you were behind right you know, well I made some mistakes sometimes it does get bright down here and we have automatic scoring units and sometimes it's hard to see and exactly no but yeah I very seldom did I ever not know that I was in the 10th frame it's funny though do you think that's the right philosophy in the championship round to know where you stand uh, at any given moment yeah I think it depends on your personality and it is for me I always did better if I knew where I was at and what I needed rather than some question mark in my mind mm. but other people they don't want to know I mean they just let me get out there play my game and throw strikes and I don't care what my opponent does well one of the greats of all time maybe the best television performer ever at least numbers wise Dick Richter never really knew what frame he was in. Well, anybody can throw 18 in a row and their heartbeat stays the same as Dick Ricker once did. Uh, what difference does it make, right? Yeah. 
Efremski with no problem whatsoever here in game number one continues to roll along although this one now through the nose and uh, that's a left-sided Durbin right that's a two four seven eight which was the uh, the tip last week uh, we'll talk about that when we return to Stadium Bowl don't forget coming up average builders here as Ski Peremski advances through game number one does the time-consuming task of putting down driveway sealant make your driveway seem this long do it faster and easier with the roller coater from Empire Brushes. The roller coater puts down the manufacturer's recommended coating of driveway sealant fast and easy. The roller coater has a squeegee to smooth out low spots and fill in cracks. Refills can be changed in only seconds by simply snapping in a new roller. So pick up your roller coater from Empire Brushes at fine stores everywhere. If you can't get enough of your favorite toppings, Pizza Hut has the pizzas you'll love. Do you love? The Meat Lover's Pizza. Six mouth-watering meat toppings smothered between two luscious layers of cheese. And now the new Veggie Lover's Pizza with peppers, mushrooms, and tons of other great veggies. Now get a Meat Lover's or new Veggie Lover's for $9.99. Any two for just $4 more. Do you love meat Lover's, Veggie Lover's. Now who do you love? Make it great. If you or someone you know suffers from hearing loss, Here's important news for you. News of Miracle Ear's smallest hearing aid ever, the Signature Micro Elite. The Micro Elite is so tiny it's barely visible, and it's helping people everywhere hear better again, even people who've been told they have nerve deafness. I've never been so excited about a hearing aid as I am about the Miracle Ear Micro Elite. I'm so proud of it. I'm putting my signature on each one. Just call this toll-free number today you'll receive this free informational booklet. It explains nerve deafness, its symptoms, and how a custom-made Miracle Ear may help you hear better again. See, it's smaller than my little finger. People won't know you're wearing it, and it delivers a sharp, clear sound. For a free informational booklet, call this toll-free number today and find out why good news from Miracle Ear means great news for you. In our previous game, you saw Ski Peremski starting his approach from way back on the approach. You also saw Les Sisler starting his approach from right around the 12-foot line. And in our ensuing ESPN telecast, you're going to see our professional bowlers starting their approaches various distances from the foul line. And it occurred to me that maybe you'd like a method to find out just how far from the foul line you should start your approach. Well, there really is a very simple method to find out just how far from the foul line I should start my approach. First of all, I simply walk up to the foul line, turn around, put my heels to the back of the foul line, and now, because I'm a four-step player, I'm going to take four and a half brisk steps away from the foul line. The extra half a step is for the slide. Here we are. One, two, three, four, and a half. And here's where I should start to start my four-step delivery. If you're a five-step player, simply make it five and a half steps. So remember, to find your starting place, go to the foul line, put your heels to the back of the foul line, four and a half steps away from that foul line if you're a four-step player, five and a half if you're a five-step player. We'll see you again July 14th on Saturday in Tucson, Arizona, three o'clock Eastern time, when we'll have another average building. And thus far, the local boy has made good. Ski Peremski will take on Akron, Ohio's Billy Gom in match number two coming up next. Nobody can give you a price to repair your exhaust system until they check it out. From here to here. At Midas, before you get a price, you get a free inspection. And you get a guaranteed estimate, so you'll know what it'll cost right up front. You get Midas trained experts and a Midas guarantee. And that guarantee is good in over 1,700 Midas shops all across the country. When we give you a price, believe it. And believe this, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. The total number of cheese puffs that you've eaten during championship wrestling and church picnics would add up to one profound puff. But you still wouldn't have a taste as big as these little Gino's pizza rolls. A tremendous taste of dusty pizza and a hot little bite-sized snack. A taste so big, it makes cheese puffs seem a little flat. Mm. 
Pino's Pizza Rolls, the pizza way to snack. It's a star-spangled July on ESPN. Future Olympic stars shine during nine days of U.S. Olympic Festival action. Our Major League Baseball diamond sparkles with live games four nights a week, plus two all-star specials and baseball tonight every night. The sparks fly with Formula One, IndyCar, and NASCAR spectacles, plus dazzling play at the British Open, U.S. Women's Open, and the Senior PGA Tour. It's a star-studded month of July on ESPN. I'm going to say he's probably playing, and if he is playing, he's got to the win. Yeah. Or he played beautifully. Marvelous for this open. And speaking of players that have competed and done well recently, Steve Ferenski off the approach again with an X to start game number two. He's now thrown six consecutive strikes on lane 57. He's going to be tired by the time he gets done because he keeps running them out with that slide. Billy Gom making his first ever shot on national television. Talked to Billy just prior to the telecast. Nervous indeed. You wouldn't know it though because Flush City comes up with his very first shot. I'm sure now he's probably <laughs> feeling a little more comfortable. Well, sometimes you are, but that first shot, you know, the heart's beating and everything, but now he's trying for the double. It's sometimes even beating more. Billy throws the ball very straight. Five steps, holds the ball up high. Kind of does a figure eight. It's the ball, he's on top of it right here. He's a little bent elbow there, too. And he comes around the side of the ball here. No slide at all. And straight as an arrow. Well, you think that'd be hard on his knee over a period of time. Right up the track, and he comes back again with a marvelous shot. So he answers Foremsky's strike in the first with a double of his own. Very nice shot. Should mention that Ski misunderstood the rule in that first match. He thought that his clock on the right lane started when that ball came out of the ball return, but it actually starts when his opponent steps off the approach. First time ever in PBA history that a player has been assessed. The loss of pins for slow play. Right now, that doesn't look as bad as being assessed this solid nine pin. Couldn't have thrown it any better right there, flush in the one-two pocket. Just uh, one of those breaks where the head pin actually clips the three. Well, I'm, I'm trying, trying to think of the other way. It actually hits the five back, and so when the, it's moving back already, the ball hits it, chops the five off the nine. And for our viewers who haven't had the opportunity to watch thus far this summer, we've explained the difference in the 25-second clock between the Senior Tour and the National Tour. There's money involved on the PBA National Tour. Yeah, there's two different tournament committees. There's a National Tournament Committee and a Senior Tournament Committee. The National Tournament Committee has the same 25-second rule. I mean, it's just the penalty that's different. On the National Tour, your first offense costs you $100, the second offense, 1000 on the senior tour, they decided that every offense would cost them five minutes. This shot rolled out a touch early, and uh, the eight-pin stands nearly had some company in the six. Well, he, still a nice rolling shot. Uh, the left lane, again, a little bit tighter for Ski. He's got to keep the speed up a little bit so that it doesn't uh, creep high like he did that shot there. First time he missed on that left-hand lane. Keep in mind, John Handegaard is our number two qualifier. He is next in line, and Earl Anthony is the top seed this week in Houston, Texas. That's the spare, no trouble. The 11-pin lead for Billy Gom out of Akron, Ohio. A member of uh, the Budweiser League of Masters, one of the outstanding scratch leagues anywhere in the country. to hurry yeah, just in a little it. bit wide yeah. yeah averts the bucket but uh, leaves the two five what are you thinking I got the double but I don't want to get high you know <laughs> Billy doesn't throw much hook to begin with you would think that he would hit the left lane a little bit better because it hooks a little bit more for the right hand A 
hard and straight. No problem with the 2-5 for Billy Gom, who back in the early 60s was a member of the Strohs team out of Detroit. So he's been bowling a long time. See the difference there. Nine pins. Mr. Gom has them. Nicknamed the Hummer. The Hummer, huh? Obvious reasons. Yeah. Karemski trailing by nine. Had no problem whatsoever in game number one as he defeated Les Schisler. A feeling he's going to have his hands full here in game two. A little wall shot, the seven pin took a shot and then finally dropped at the last moment. Well, just a little delayed reaction there by that seven pin, but it fell. So Gom strikes in the fourth and leads by nine. We'll be back with more of game number two after these messages. Most guys would tell you they don't really think about their hair. Right. Personally, I think most guys want their hair to look good, as long as it's not a hassle. That's where Pert Plus comes in. It's a unique shampoo and conditioner in one. So, you get clean, more manageable hair than with plain shampoo, but without any extra work. That's Pert Plus. Hey, I admit it. I think about my hair. But it's not all I think about. Shampoo and conditioner in one. Wash and go with Pert Plus. Say who we are, and you get this with your paid subscription to this popular science at a very special rate 946 off the cover price and this handsome tote free if you grab the bargain now call toll free 1-800-554-9000 12 issues are 1394 an instant tv disc out of 40 percent off newsstand price to save and claim your gift call 1-800-554-9000 that's 1-800-554-9000 it's one of the oldest and richest events on the PBA Summer Tour. The Tucson Challenge. The world's top bowlers shoot it out live Saturday afternoon at 3 Eastern only on ESPN. Ah, uh, yes, it's the East and the West as far as the Fabball Company is concerned. Dennis Baldwin to your left, the president of Fabball East, and Dave Hardy out of Utah, the president of Fabball Utah congratulate those gentlemen on their participation in the PBA Senior Tour and of course they've also been instrumental in sponsoring events on the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour so Fabal very much involved in the sport of professional bowling as Faremski leaves the solid six and last game he carried everything and this game he can't carry a thing that solid nine seemed to set the the stage you know he'd have been off with a double right away and then Bang, bang. Let me ask you this, Mike. Uh, psychologically, after being assessed the five-pin fine uh, penalty, would, would that change your thinking? Would it make you just speed up naturally, get out of your rhythm? Well, with Ski, I think it was he just misunderstood the rule, although I think it probably did upset him a little bit. I think it unnerved him somewhat and broke his concentration, but he did have the in-between games to regroup and get himself back together. I think the solid nine did it more than anything else. Well, still right in the match at this point as we're nearing the fifth frame, just ten pins down. Only double in this one thus far, provided by Billy Gom in the first and in the second. Of course, Stadium Bowl, certainly a familiar bowling center for Ski Faremski, who practiced and bowled here for many, many, many years. So he's familiar with the lanes. A little better speed with that shot, but it seemed to sail on him just right, a touch. just didn't make it back. He's, he's trying to find that right touch where he has to throw a little bit harder on lane 58 and, and soften up a little bit on 57. It's, uh, it's sometimes difficult when you got lanes that are a little bit different like that to get that right touch on each one. In 19 appearances in the championship round, Ski Faremski now with 12 wins and 14 losses. He's just looking to get the 500. That will be enough. Six left-handers in the top 24 here this week at Stadium Bowl. Two of the six qualified for our telecast. They were up there all week long, too. Qualified 1-2 in the in the qualifying room. Well, he liked it the moment it left his hand as he left the 2-5 the last trip on lane 58 and made a nice adjustment. Boy, television's not bothering him a bit. He's coming right out and just uh, throwing it right at the pocket. Very little hook. He sets that down about on the 8th or ninth board, and it hit 8 or 9 at the arrows. and gets to 17. That's a uh, very little hook power, but a very big strike. There's his uh, reaction to that. 
Well, I hate to say this, but uh, I don't think there's any problem counting the number of revolutions on his shot when it leaves even. It doesn't matter, Danny. They don't pay for how many revolutions. They pay for how many pins fall down. I agree. Watch it rev up at the end, though, this time. Pretty interesting. A lot of different ways to knock them down. Comes back with the hammer and another double. So Billy Gom trying to seal Foremsky's fate early on in this one now leads by 32. He's got to get his striking clothes on right now. Needed a break and didn't get it. Ball hung again this time on lane 58. Foremsky a little upset with himself. I don't think he liked that shot. He's, uh, he knows that he has to just get his uh, act together and get some strikes going to keep, keep up with gum as he uh, sends it out wide on 58 and it doesn't make it back. Looks like he just didn't get the lift that he wanted to get. Even though the ball's rolling at the end. That head pin's got to hit the three in order to do it. Cross lane. And uh, he is still in the match, but uh, he's running out of frames down by 35 now. The best he can get if he strikes out now is 233. See the scoreboard right there. Light twice in a row, and the tendency now is to make that adjustment and go high. But his adjustment is right in the pocket. High flush that time. High flush, right. Playing outside the first arrow, left of the first arrow, sending it out toward the channel. It's right about on the first arrow, it looked like. It's out there past it as it goes down the lane. Winds up solid in the one-two. Back to live action. Well, the half ten provided this time on lane 58 for Billy Gump. And I bet he's left a few of those in his uh, bowling career. As do most players. Yes, as do most players. Some more than others, though. <laughs> Speaking from experience. I haven't said it yet. <laughs> of course, I was thinking that. I knew you were thinking that. I was reading your mind. Had to have a little fun with, uh, with Billy. I was the master of ceremonies at the Budweiser League of Masters Banquet this past year. And he averaged well over 220 in that league. And uh, I accused him of sandblasting his bowling balls. Very low-key, quiet type of player, but uh, very effective. 34-pin lead as he heads into the eighth, trying to get uh, his first victory under his belt at this point. It won't get any easier, though, if he does manage to get by Foremsky because he's got Handigard waiting in the wings and then Earl Anthony on top. The legend on top of that, huh? That ball just set in the park. Reminded me of Billy Hardwick's shot right there. <laughs> and he's a flush seven, solid seven. Wow. Gom just shakes his head in disbelief as uh, this seven pin gets whacked. The two pin went up against the sideboard, clipped the seven, and it's wiggling there, but doesn't fall over. Now you got to regroup and make sure that it's not a, a double mistake and that you miss it. You make sure you cover the spare. Now you can see it looked like he might have stuck a little bit on the left-hand approach. And so an unforced error after a beautiful shot. He leaves the solid seven and then can't convert. And Foremsky right now, if he gets a couple strikes, can put himself right back in this match. Gom's best game now would be 235 if he would strike out. But you're right, Foremsky has... An outside chance using an outside line. He's down on both knees, and he comes back with a strike. And the nine pin was up there for a split second again. He almost had another solid nine. Watch the nine. Very nice touch he had on this shot. Softened up that speed, sent it out there, trusted it all the way. Watch the nine pin. 
Now he has to get that concentration though back together. He's down by 12, ninth frame. He can set himself up, you know, cut it to two and have that foundation strike. Firm shot, doesn't quite get back. And uh, I think Ski felt like he you know, came up with a pretty good shot there. Well, he just didn't get the rotation and the lift on it that he wanted to, I don't think then. You know, he rushed those feet just a little bit. He's got fast feet to begin with. And that lane, again, requires that, that softer touch to let it roll up. If he makes this, he's going to be down 15. Trouble. Well, he gets a double, and it comes right back and chops the 3-5-6 and uh, hands a 20-some pin lead over to Billy Gum going into the ninth and 10th. And Billy is in good shape right now. And you see Billy kind of wrinkling the brow, realizing, well, I missed one, but I got one back. I'm fortunate at this stage. Yeah, up by 27 pins. Points it up. <laughs> well, this time he gets the break on the seven, breathes a sigh of relief, and uh, the evening is just about over for Ski Paremski, but uh, Ski did provide the local fans uh, with some excitement in game number one when he started with the first seven strikes. Yeah, he sure did. Billy, if I have my score right, needs two pins on two balls in order to emerge a win. I like his chances. Yeah, he says he needs seven. I guess I had it wrong. Uh, let me add that right. I'll take their word for it, seven pins. <laughs> of course, uh, the legend, Glenn Allison, working in the truck graphically for us this evening, Mr. 900. He knows a lot about scoring and strikes. Well, yeah, you know, anybody can add that up. That's right. Strike every That's right. The easiest way to add a bowling score is to throw all strikes. There aren't too many of us, uh, however, that can manage that feat. Billy Gam of Akron, Ohio, will advance to take on John Handegard here in Game number three, and uh, without question, this is a dream come true for Billy Gaim to get an opportunity to come out and compete on the national tour, even though he's doing it as a senior as opposed to a regular tour player. And to win his first game, he's got to really be excited now. Are they cheering back at uh, Stonehenge Place? Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, they're hooting and hollering a little bit. And the funny thing was, Billy came up to me just prior to the telecast. He had thrown a couple of practice shots, and I said, well, did you talk to anybody back in in Akron, tell him he made the show. He said, I have a feeling that virtually everybody I know is watching or taping, and he just shook his head. He said, I hope I do well. <laughs> <laughs> he can hold his head up high, you right? You bet. Very, very solid game, with the exception of the miscue when he missed the seven pin. Nice relax shot, stretches out, so after a couple more strikes in the 10th, it's a very solid game of 234 for Billy Gown. Yep, very solid indeed. One ball out of the pocket, and he left the 2-5 back in the third frame. Other than that, he had every ball in the, in the hole. For Ski Foremski, it's a fourth-place finish. And keep in mind, he'll be back next year, challenging here in Houston, Texas. Which heating system does the owner of Newcomer Oil use in his home? The system that can save you at least 40% over other heating systems and provide a near endless supply of hot water for less than $12 a month. It's the Energy Kinetic System 2000 with unique sidewall venting that requires no chimney. So call Newcomer Oil at 367-1138 and ask how your family can save $500 a year or more on heating and hot water costs, the revolutionary System 2000. Because at Newcomer Oil, we think you might have something better to do with your money. You choose. Is this the view from your hotel window that you want to wake up to on your vacation? Or is this more like what a vacation view should look like? Is this what you want to fall asleep listening to? Or is this more like it? The Lodge at Lake Racetown Resort for vacations or business retreats where every room comes with a view worth looking at. The Lodge at Lake Racetown Resort. Come see the beauty of it all. Hunt's Bowling News. And welcome back, everyone, to Stadium Bowl located in Houston, Texas. And after three PBA Seniors events here in 1990, John Hersina of Franklin, Pennsylvania, is the tour's top money winner. Let's take a look now at the first five. 
Persena, who captured the AMF Bobcat Classic in St. Charles just two weeks ago, leads Earl Anthony by just over $1,000. However, regardless of where he finishes here this evening, the doomsday stroking machine Earl Anthony will regain the number one position. Tita Samez is currently third, while Robert Gibbs and Jimmy Certain round out the top five. Over in the high average department, some very impressive numbers posted thus far. The surprising Dave Tool Jr. of Tacoma, Washington leads the way with an average of 220. Meanwhile, John Hersina is less than one pin per game behind. Jimmy Certain number three, while the great one Dick Weber and Tita Semez currently fill out the first five. From April 5th all the way through July 4th, more than 55,000 women bowlers from virtually every state in the union compete each and every year in the WIBC championships. This year was year number 71, and of course this year they bowled down in Tampa, Florida at Oak Field and also Regal Lanes. Things are all wrapped up. Let's now take a look at the champions for 1990. $1 million was doled out to bowlers of all averages from virtually every state in the United States. Florida's annual Sunshine State Games will begin with opening ceremonies at the fabled Orange Bowl Stadium located in Miami, Florida. Bowling is among the more than 40 sports competitions involving young and old amateur athletes. We here at the Bowling News would like to salute all of the hard workers in nearly 30 states who conduct these events. And whether it's the Sunshine State Games or the Empire or Garden State Games, it gives the everyday person and the weekend warrior type athlete his or her rare opportunity to go for the gold. And we would also like to wish all of those competitors the best of luck in each of their state games. That's a look this week at the Bowling News from the Stadium Bowl in Houston, Texas. Bowling News is brought to you by Pizza Hut, home of pan pizza that's winning the hearts of America. Pizza Hut, making it great. And coming up next, the semifinal game, Billy Gom and Jan Handegard. Stay tuned. If you can't get enough of your favorite toppings, Pizza Hut is the pizzas you'll love. Do you love the Meat Lover's Pizza. Six mouth-watering meat toppings smothered between two luscious layers of cheese. And now the new Veggie Lover's Pizza with peppers, mushrooms, and tons of other great veggies. Now get a Meat Lover's or new Veggie Lover's for $9.99. Any two for just $4 more. Do you love meat Lover's, Veggie Lover's. Now who do you love? Pizza Hut. Great. Morning, Joe. Morning, Mrs. Jenks. Got a Western Union here for Mr. Jenks. Hope it's good news. Oh, it is. It's that dollar a week life insurance for veterans that Tom and I called about. Dollar a week life insurance? Uh-huh. It's a real good deal. And because Tom was in the service, I can get coverage, too, for just a dollar a week. You know, I could use some extra insurance. Well, you were in the service, weren't you, Joe? Well, yeah, but it was stateside. Army reserves. Doesn't matter. It says here, wartime, peacetime, active, or reserves. All branches of service. Great. What do I do? Make a phone call? Sure. Let me write down the number. And if you're a veteran aged 50 to 69, you'll want to write down this number too. Because now you can get in on this dollar a week term life insurance plan exclusively for veterans. It's a great value for both veterans and spouses. Your dollar a week rate can never go up. That's guaranteed. And your benefits, well, they never go down. Plus, there's no medical exam to take. And there's no waiting period. Once you're covered, it's from the very first day for the full amount. Just call this toll-free number. Free information will be rushed to you by Western Union. A dollar a week. It's one of the best ways going to give your family the extra security you want them to have. Call now. Veterans, call 1-800-548-4600 for information from Veterans Life Insurance Company. You'll get free membership in Veterans Vision Care, plus the Veterans Update newsletter once you're covered. That's 1-800-548-4600. Call now.
It's one of the oldest and richest events on the PBA Summer Tour. The Tucson Challenge. The world's top bowlers shoot it out live Saturday afternoon at 3 Eastern only on ESPN. Match number three, the semifinal game featuring John Handegard and Billy Gum, who has now disposed of Ski Faremski. Steadiest players on the senior tour without question. John Handegard and gets a big time break with his opening shot. Certainly does. Had the 4 6 7 up there. John, I don't think, likes the left lane. He's chosen to finish on the right lane, which was uh, Billy Gom's weaker of the two. I mean, he really didn't have a weak lane. Personally, if I, if I had liked both lanes the same, I would have made Gom finish on the right. Takes out the six with little or no plus. So Handegard opens with a spare in the first. And Billy Gobb, who came out and quickly doubled on Ski for Emski. Well, let's see if he can uh, start similarly here in the semifinal game. Well, he's uh, obviously got a great shot to the pocket. He knows that if he executes right, that, uh, that he can shoot 220, 230 every game. It's a nice comforting feeling. more lift on this one than we saw in game number one and uh, ball skidded right by the pocket right I just think that the lift was actually the thumb dragging as it came out of the ball he didn't get out of it clean the ball got lofted a little bit more went further down the lane didn't hook all right let's move right along there why does it uh, why does it hang in the thumb hole well it can be a number of reasons I mean the thumb can be swelling it could just be uh, the break in between the games or it could just be you know pressure I mean uh, I used to shorten that span all the time Dad. okay we did have a small break after game number two. See, I think it really was the pressure. Did you see how smooth that, that one came off with the spare shot? He came, that one just flew off his hand. This is the first shot here. Now watch his hand. He kind of rotates it around and gets to the side of the ball. No slide again. And right here, you see the thumb of the fingers are all at the same time. See his hand go over the top of the ball like that there? Mm -hmm. He just never got out of that clean. That figure eight, uh, so reminiscent of all those years that Billy Waylu gave him that figure eight shot. You just don't see that very often anymore. Tries to hammer out the 10 and can't quite get the job done. And again, that shot was forced just a little bit too. He, he kind of steered it into the pocket and he was light with the fingers again. He didn't have that thumb out real clean again and the week 10 was the result. Having an opportunity to participate on the PBA Senior Tour. His sponsors, Jeff Mraz and Dick Grand. They know how to pick winners. Uh, they're sponsoring Jimmy Pensack on the <laughs> national tour. I guess they do know how to pick winners. Mm -hmm. Cross lane at the 10 pin. No trouble. Seems to be settling in just a bit. Let's see if Handigard can get on track. Handigard's the one that needs to settle in as he looks at that uh, TV record, picked up the wrong ball. He wants the ball that's a little bit shinier, that goes a little bit straighter. He's playing further right than all the other right-handers. Of course, there's only two right-handers left in the tournament. Even a lot of room. Misses the head pin completely, so obviously hand to guard a bit confused here on the championship pair of 57 and 58. Just kind of a kind of a quick shot that he threw there. He just never was thinking about what he was doing. He leaves the one, two, four, eight. Not an easy spare by any man that means. Trouble. Boy, he just does it to himself, you know. I mean, you get up there and you, you make two bad shots, don't hit the head pin on either ball. I mean, mentally now, he is really in a lot of trouble. Puts his hand on the side of the ball like that, pushes it out, puts that ball right on the table. Now the ball's in perfect time here. Head is steady, gets behind the ball. Or he's still a little bit on the side there. Nice, long slide. He's a pretty bowler, you know. Obviously, he's got talent. Point from that view, it doesn't look like there's any way he could go wrong. Comes back, needs a shaker, and leaves the soft seven this time. Perplexed as he heads back for the ball return. Those crackling pins you hear off in the distance. 
our top seed Earl Anthony and of course uh, there you see Greg and Susan Handigard John's family Trying to root them on Susan's really having a hard time with this she's, boy he's been bowling so well and he's making the telecast we got to get him over the hump that's about what it amounts to sure. but, uh, he hasn't been able to do it yet you just don't win matches on television missing spares and uh, not striking you unless somebody just falls apart in front of you don't suspect Billy Gaum would do that White Ooh. <laughs> I imagine he's looked at a five bit or two in his life uh, do you think the seven and the ten have ever been involved with it? Well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you throw the ball with any speed like that up the track, I mean, obviously when you watch some of the senior players bowl, uh, they're still utilizing the games that, that took them to stardom, and then that's not hooking at 25 or 30 boards like the youngsters do. Well, they grew up bowling on lacquer on track conditions, a track being somewhere between the second and third arrow, where you kept up the idea was to keep that ball in the track and keep it straight there. And Billy, I'm sure, <laughs> never had any trouble with that. <laughs> yeah, there was a premium placed on those types of shots. And don't forget, next Saturday, heading down to one of my favorite stops without question, Golden Pin Lanes in Tucson, Arizona, for the $145,000 Miller Lite Challenge, live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, two hours of coverage next Saturday afternoon. We'll go down and see our good old buddy Pete Thomas, the general manager. Looking for our first strike by either bowler in this match. Softer speed. Uh, not quite. How much of the lanes changed, Mike, between game number two and where we are right now? I don't think they've changed at all. I think it's the bowlers just not executing the way they want to execute at this point in time. They may have gotten a little bit tighter with the oil carrying down the lane. Billy does have a kind of a puzzled look on his face right now. He thought that ball would come up. Still battling is Billy Gom here in the semifinal game as he leads by 12. We'll be back with the conclusion and uh, the player who advances to take on Earl Anthony right after this. There's something about the way it moves me. There's something about the way it moves me. There's something special about a Lancaster Dodge, cause it's more, 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 it's more than a car. Coming now for these great deals, Dodge Colts as low as $67.62, or the Shadow Liftback as low as $9,096. There's something special about a Lancaster Dodge, and it's more, 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 it's more than a car. Beale Street in old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Beale Street means a blues festival and spicy barbecue, Memphis style. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place and old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. It just doesn't get any better than this. As we take a look at the other finishers here this week. Some outstanding names. Samez, Weber in there. Hersina, last week's champ. Back to live action. John Andegard. And there is the strike that he has been looking for. Well, we finally got our first strike of this match. And John's got to get some strikes on the board. He's trailing by 12 pins here. A double puts him right back in the match. And says to Billy Gom, hey, I figured it out. I've got my act together. And I'm ready to go. tad tighter than the right. No, it's hooking more. You, you think? Know. Yeah. It, in his mind, that's it's what John told me specifically in practice, that, that the left lane was hooking more, and he's afraid of it hooking, so that's why this, he sends it so far right and won't come back. All right, one more question. Would you rather throw a shot that's going to hook more or less in your mind? Hey, if you know it's coming back, at least you can wheel it a little bit, can't you? As he goes for the spare, 
Well, what the, what the fear is that they will hook early then. Okay. They might in the, in the early part of the lane. And uh, So what you're telling me is you'd rather leave a washout because you can make that as opposed to a big split. Well, no. No? What I'm saying is, is, is he's letting the, the lane dictate to him how to throw the ball. Right. Rather than just getting up there and making the shot and adjusting to that. Okay. A little more speed, a little more direct approach, and Dom comes up with a strike of his own. See, Philly's going up there and making his shots, and then what the lane does, he's adjusting to that and just making his own shots. Handy guard, though, is letting the, the condition right now dictate to him how he throws the ball. One of the nicest players on the PBA Senior Tour, John Handegard. A lot of people out here would love to see him win a title. Well, plus himself. Sure. He, is, uh, he has struggled with it, though, but he'll break through sooner or later. Key shot now for Don, who leads by a dozen. Could increase that to 22. Right. On his good lane. And doesn't make it up. The two and the four. So both bowlers just kind of uh, throwing jabs at one another, but no one ready to hit with that uh, right cross. See, it seems to me that 57 hangs. It seems like they think they're throwing pretty good shots in the last 15 feet of the lane. The ball doesn't react. Well, see, I'm just going by what Handyguard told me in the practice sure. balls, that 57 hooked more than 58. 58. Yeah. There's a couple three boards is what he said. Did he? At the two four. too because Billy Gahn mentioned uh, in between the time they started practice and just prior to the telecast that the lanes changed three or four boards. So they could be getting a little bit tighter for gum right now. Handy guard right now just needs to make the quality shots to hit the target. Pretty good shot Pretty there. Good leaves shot there. A ringing 10 pin. Targets right around the first arrow. Nice form, left arm out for balance. Just about one board inside the, the first arrow. Breaks a little late to watch the six pin, second from the right. Flies around that 10. Now he changes hand positions here, gets his hand more behind the ball, and he's going to probably throw it very straight at the 10 pin. It's interesting if we could get a shot, perhaps, of uh, his hand position when he first starts throwing his strike ball. He made an adjustment this week that's paid off. Well, he's been using this adjustment for uh, a number of weeks. He puts his hand on the side of the ball to begin with. And the reason he does that, as we see the difference in the score there, 13 pins with Gom having them, is because when he has a tendency in the downswing as he's coming back for his hand to open up. So he doesn't want it to open up too much, so he starts there hoping that it will open to the right position Tries to give it that suitcase approach. This one high and through the nose, and he leaves the big four, which is exactly what you talked about. He felt like he threw a quality shot, and the ball reacted very early for him. See, the lane, he, he's been afraid of the lane hooking all along, and this has just been the story of John Handigard on television every single time. He can't bowl 180 anymore. I mean, it's just... Uh, I mean, a guy coming on to bowl Handigard right now has got to be licking his chops. What I think he needs to be doing then on that lane is he either has to go to a hand release that's going to go straighter and throw harder, or he's got to get his feet further left where there's a little bit more oil. Well, after the open, a 29-pin lead now for Billy Gobb, who is uh, right now in the area of bowling himself into his first ever attempt at a title. With one strike, that's all he's got. Well, did you notice how he cut the release off a little short that time? Did you watch that? No, I didn't. I was watching uh, something else at the time, so I really didn't see his release that cleanly that time. Pretty interesting. I mean, it was almost like he really tried to set that one down short. Watch it. Heads right at the target. That figure eight. Oh, he really twisted over the top. He's trying to steer it up there. <laughs> Ended up with a strike in the seventh. If he doubles here, he can basically wave goodbye to Handegard and introduce himself to Mr. Anthony. He really stopped with that for the Brooklyn. Well, leaves only the ninth, and we're not seeing the best bowling right now. You know, Handicard is not out of this match yet. Trying to muster whatever he has to to 
apply some pressure on Billy Gaughan, but thus far, John Handegard has uh, been puzzled by this pair. Funny, in watching him, he, he seems to have a constant over and under reaction in the championship round. He never, never seems to either have the right ball or the right angle. It's because he's not throwing the ball the way he can throw it. And you don't make 12 consecutive top 24s without being an outstanding player. Right. I mean, it just gets into this one-game situation, and and uh, he can't get himself loose to make the quality shots that he wants to, and then it, it feeds on itself. He gets in a hole. He got behind right away. He does that every time. Could still shoot 198 if he strikes out. Road call. Now that cuts it down into the 180s. Now he's things are looking bleak. Now he has to strike out and Gom has to open. The only open Billy Gom has had here in the better part of two games was a seven pin that he missed against Faremski. Waiting in the wings, Earl Anthony. What kind of shot will he make here in the ninth frame? I, I firmly believe he's got to move another forward or two left on this left lane with a little bit more speed and go a little bit more direct. There's more speed. And he gets the four out, keeps his faint hope alive. Destiny right now in the hands of Billy Gaughan. You can wrap this one up early. You need two more. He's got a mark in the ninth and the tenth. Just shut out him. That's the best kind of mark. That was his best shot of the game right there. Nice clean release right up the track at the one three. No hook at all. Looking over at the score. Well, so many times, uh, at least through the years that I have watched the championship round, I always take a look at uh, what a player does when he has an opportunity to close out a match. And uh, what kind of a shot does he make in that situation? Right. Uh, that tells you something about it. One knee and Gom with a superb ninth and tenth closes out John Handegard, who will finish third. So it'll be Billy Gom and Earl Anthony, our top seed. They will buy for the title here, the $80,000 Hammer PBA Senior Open. We'll be back with that right after this. We're here at an athletic shoe store to see people's reactions to this sneaker phone from Sports Illustrated. Now, the only thing is, we're not going to show it to them. We're going to let them discover it for themselves. Come on. Go ahead. You pick it up. Anybody there? Hello? Uh, the sneaker's ringing. <laughs> I've never saw anything like that. Did they all ring? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, get a load of this. Come here, come here, look at this. I can't believe it. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> a sneaker phone, that's great. Sports Illustrated presents the sneaker phone. It's yours free with your paid subscription to SI. Hello, Chief. This is Clark. <laughs> oh, honey? Honey? You won't believe where I'm calling from. <laughs> The Sports Illustrated sneaker phone works just like a regular phone. It has push-button dialing, mute button, automatic redial, an on-off switch, and of course it plugs into a standard jack. This is a sneaker phone? <laughs> it's great. You like that? Yeah, how much? It's free. Free? No. <laughs> the Sports Illustrated sneaker phone is yours free. Just subscribe to 30 issues of SI for three low monthly installments of only $14.97. That's over 45% off the cover price. So call the toll-free number on the screen now. Of course, the subscription includes the NFL and NBA previews, the year-end double issue, the revealing 1991 swimsuit issue, and the free sneaker phone. It's free? Free. They're free. They're free. Fantastic. Which we mean it's free. It's free. 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 I'm pulling my leg. I wouldn't pull your leg. 
Great. You heard it here first. Everybody loves the sneaker phone from Sports Illustrated. And so will you. Call now to subscribe to Sports Illustrated at over 45% off the cover price and get the sneaker phone free. Hello? <laughs> That's great! <laughs> Championship Frame is brought to you by Midas. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. And let's take a look at game number one. Ski Faremski defeated Les Schisler, but this was one of the key shots uh, that got him there. He started with the first seven. And uh, most of the strikes look like this. Oh, no, this is the one that was uh, the lucky break in the third frame here with the three pin falls late after the six pin hit it. And that seemed to get him going, you know. Didn't take much to get Peremski going here this evening in front of the hometown folk, but there you see 247 to 206. And uh, the interesting thing about game number one, the first ever penalty assessed, five-pin penalty for going over the 25-second clock. Nevertheless, an easy victory, though, for Ski Peremski, 242 to 206. Then came along Billy Gom to uh, take on Ski Peremski in game number two, and uh, the shoe was on the other foot. Ninth frame action here. If he'd have struck, he'd have cut the lead to two. If he makes the spare, it's 15. He chops it and virtually hands the match to Billy Gum. And so a virtual unknown to our national audience, Billy Gum, ends up getting the better of the local pro, Ski Faremski. In game number two, the final there, 234 to 188. So for Billy Gum, then it was on to the semifinal game against John Handegard, our number two seed. Billy Gum just rolling along, keeping the ball in the pocket. Needs this one to close him out, and just a perfect shot. Ten in the pit, straight as an arrow, and he says, I get to bolt Earl. Oh, that'll be interesting. 2.06 to 152. So Billy Gom out of Akron, Ohio, takes on the great one, Earl Anthony. Championship frame has been brought to you by Midas and its dealers across the country. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. And we'll be back with the title game here from Stadium Bowl in Houston, Texas. Uh, the most prolific champion in PBA history facing a player who would like to win his very first title. If you think a muffler is something you just stick under your car, think again. The wrong one can really hurt your engine performance and fuel economy. We know. We've been engineering, building, and installing mufflers for 34 years. You get a muffler here, it's Midas quality. Installed by Midas trained experts and guaranteed for as long as you own your car. All at a great price. At Midas, we do the job once and we do it right. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. The Vector Series. A revolutionary new concept. The Vector. For the person seeking pro row and increased pin carry, the secret lies within. In traditional balls, the weight lock is toward the outer surface. In the Vector 1, it's closer to the heart of the ball. In the Vector 2, next to the heart. The revolutions increase, giving you maximum striking power. The Vector Series, from Columbia 300. So only at Lens and Pro Shops. Back of a bet. Can't be beat with baseball. Four nights a week. Under the light. ESPN Baseball tonight. Tuesday, Friday, double Sunday, watch the fun, Sunday night. I won't run. The Royals face the Orioles, or the Athletics battle the Twins, Wednesday night, live on ESPN. $9,500 to our winner here of the $80,000 Hammer PBA Senior Open, $5,000 per second, $4,500, 3200 right now, though, they're thinking about who's going to be number one. Will it be Billy Gom of Akron, Ohio? I think he's got an excellent chance. Although, he's got to be nervous bowling early. Look like he turned it a little early and gets a break and leaves only the four pin. Well, like you say, you want to get it up there. He was light, you know, the first four or five frames of the last game. He says, I'm not going to do that again. Quite a thrill for Billy Gobb who is going to bowl the PBA Senior Tour full-time, and uh, seems like it's a pretty good idea. We got a chance at $9,500 tonight. Trouble? No. <laughs> he missed that seventh bit in the first game he bowled. 53-year-old Earl Anthony with 
43 career PDA titles, 41 on the national tour, and uh, two senior victories thus far to his credit. A girl who struck several times on this right lane of practice, but I did not see him throw a strike on the left lane. Chose to finish today. The great style of Earl Anthony. Five steps, steady head. Let's watch the backswing, see how high it is. See, that's higher than it was when he was bowling on the national tour. He's made a conscious effort here as that long slide goes through for more speed on the senior tour. He's already won once this year, not coming in Las Vegas. Sets it down early, shakes him loose, and Earl starts with a double here in the title match. Kind of looks at Billy Gobb, and Billy Gobb might be thinking, whoops, what have I got myself in for here? <laughs> I don't think Mr. Gom would trade this one for anything in the world. You think he's enjoying bowling? Oh, Mr. I know. Anthony, huh? and I tell you what, he's a tough customer and a competitor. Has to hurry. But you can see his swing changing a little bit now that we've uh, gotten to the title match. Well, he was that way earlier in that last game. If, if Handyguard would have been able to put any pressure on him, I think John would have been in good shape, but he couldn't do it. Earl is not uh, going to make that same mistake. Hardly not. Gone with victories over Ski Faremski, 234 to 188, and then defeating John Handyguard in the last game, 206 to 152, trying to make it three in a row. He will be tested here as he takes the 2-4 off the 5. He didn't want to do that. No. no. And now he's done exactly what Handyguard did the previous match. Get an open early and get himself behind in a big hurry to a guy that you don't want to be behind. No. Well, let's see what he comes up here with uh, on lane 57. See if he can throw a strike here and uh, get his confidence back. Take that little breath there, blow it out. <laughs> Just enough. And a little dice omatic on the left hand lane, so Gom strikes. A little one upsmanship there by Earl Anthony. Led more than 50 tournaments in his PBA career. Takes no time. And has gone three for three. As we take a look at the positions by round, once Earl got locked in after round number four, he stayed the top seed. Now we see a left-hander led every round. Billy Gom 11th and 4th, 6th, 3rd, 4th, and Right back to qualify for the telecast. Interesting note, last night when I walked in, Earl had the first five in game number two of the final round. I walked up, he said, these lanes are really tough. If I leak it a little bit, it hooks early. If I set it short, it does this and this and this. Meanwhile, he ended up shooting 300 that game. And he has four in a row here. My point precisely. Earl is amazing. He'll be in practice and he'll be struggling and can't strike and don't have any area and everything. And he'll turn the lights on and it's off with five in a row or something, you know. I'm going to relate another story to you after this shot concerning Mr. Anthony and his feelings about lane conditions. Meanwhile, Billy Tom is in a position that he must strike. Stretches out, tries to keep the speed, and he, oh, oh, comes up with the cave-in on 58, and that could be the break of the week. Well, he wanted, it was light last time. He wanted to get it up there this time, and he did. The old early turn and gets the Jersey Squasher or the Snow Shovel Brooklyn. And he says, well, I'm embarrassed, but I'll take it. Yep. Matter of fact, I'd probably do the same thing here on the left-hand lane and take it if I could get three in a row. Trails by 34, but not out of this one. However, that might have just changed. See, it's just the pressure that a person puts on themselves in the situation. Andy Guard put all that pressure on himself, and when the key shots came up, that was the result right there. And Billy Gom, knowing that if he gets this, he puts a little pressure on Earl. Well, when you haven't been in that position before, it's hard to respond. It's a learning process. 
Take the count and run, and that's what Gom does, but falls desperately behind Anthony at this stage. Earl starting with the first four. Now leads by 49. Could increase that right here. Yeah. A couple strikes here in the matches for all intents and purposes over. Pin was late, so was the eighth, and Earl, with a wry smile, appreciated the pin carry. Watch and see what hits the eighth pin here. That was the sixth that got it out of the pit. It was going by. Unusual strike. As we take a look at the proprietors here at Stadium Bowl, Max Tribble and Jamie Brooks, former president of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America, enjoying Anthony's run, and Earl now is at six. Let's get back to that story. It was in Hawaii, a PBA national event, and Harry Golden, the national tournament director, asked Earl Anthony what lane that he was going to start on in the championship game. Earl said, I don't care, Harry. I can't hit either lane. I've got no chance on either lane to strike. He shot 299. That's right. correct. Billy Gomery now trying to uh, basically get out of the way, I think, at this yeah. stage. And it's too bad because he bowled so beautifully to get to the championship game. And uh, I don't know, it's like striking out two batters and then all of a sudden you look and Babe Ruth is there. <laughs> and he hasn't hit a homer today. And you just know he's going to get the meat of the bat on it. And Earl, who had won 300 earlier this week, a couple more strikes and he's going to be thinking about a second one. Down by way too many. Billy Gom surveys the board, and there we see it graphically. Nevertheless, an outstanding week for Billy Gom, and uh, I'm sure a match that he will never forget. He'd like to remember it a little better if he could put a couple strikes together here and finish with 200. But if Earl shoots 300, Billy could say, hey, I bowled the bet. He's got 300. There's no way I could beat him. <laughs> <laughs> Through the nose again, and uh, when it comes unglued, it normally does. Yeah. Well, right now, like you say, Billy, just trying to get out of the way. Not too many close matches in uh, no. this week's telecast. Kind of an interesting uh, week, wasn't it? Yeah. 242 to 206, 234 to 188, 206 to 152, and maybe, just maybe, the big one here in the championship game. Well, it would be fitting for this man. He's come close on national television shooting a perfect game, and uh, we do have a gentleman sitting with us here this evening that does have the first perfect game ever bowled on television, Jack Bianamillo. I was there to watch that one. the ant acid. Watch the three pin as it nudges the six and it turns all the way around. You see the label on the pin and then it falls over. Mm -hmm. A little body English, a little bobbing and weaving, and we are now in the eighth. Oh! <laughs> We're all having a good time out there. Perfect shot in the eighth. Ferensky started with the first seven in game number one. Anthony matches that feat in the title game. And uh, now, basically, all that's left is to finish up the match. And uh, just a little aside here for our viewers throughout the country, we were running a little close on time. So prior to the championship game, I leaned around and said, excuse me, Earl, could you throw a few strikes here to speed it up? He just winked. He said, anything for you, Denny, is what he said. <laughs> Ah, now that was the kind of shot that I was expecting to see from Billy Gom much earlier on in this one. Michael. Right. Well, now the pressure's off, it's easier to throw there. <laughs> and a man who was in that position many times yourself, I guess it's like that, isn't it, Michael? When yeah. you, you can win a couple of games, but when you bowl for your first title, it probably changes dramatically. Oh, it does. 
especially if you're bowling a legend again, maybe the best that ever played the game. You're right. It's kind of like giving Nicholas one up. And the dinner bucket served up on lane 57. Don't forget, next week, Golden Pin Lanes, Tucson, Arizona. Michael and I will be there next Saturday afternoon for the championship round finals of the $145,000 Miller Lite Challenge. That's on July 14th. Yep. Of course, the touring pros are in Phoenix this week. Is that correct? Yeah. This is coming Saturday. Two tours running right now, the PBA Senior Tour and the PBA National Tour. And our good friend, John Wonders, the president of Fabball Enterprises, one of the great bowling fans anywhere in the country. I know John has enjoyed the action here this week as well as this evening. He's been around all week. Speaking of another guy that's been around all week, another soft seven, but uh, for Earl Anthony, it will be victory number 44 in his PBA career. Three as a senior. He's fast catching Weber and Semes, who have five. Ooh, you tossed that in there, didn't you? Both of those players qualifying for the finals this week. Tita Semes, I think, was fifth heading into the position round game last night, very narrowly missing our championship round here this evening. Three strikes, and Earl just shoots 268 at you. No big deal. No big deal. Boy. I bowled him for titles twice. So, fortunately, the split. <laughs> One and one. And so Anthony strikes in the 10th and is cruising to a victory here at Stadium Bowl. Billy Gom will get up and finish his as well. Uh, ah, they come so easily now. And uh, we'll head out now from Stadium Bowl. Earl Anthony, the doomsday stroking machine, has claimed yet another victor here in Houston. You can sweat at the storm. You can dance till you drop. But if you're serious about a firmer stomach, you've got to use your head. Fitness Quest presents Tummy Talk with Charlene Tilton. I work hard to stay fit, and I love it. But holding on to a great weight takes special attention. So I'm glad I discovered this lean, mean sit-up machine. The one and only abdominizer. It's a major innovation in fitness technology. And it lets you rock, rock, rock your way to a firmer stomach. Ordinary sit-ups use muscles in your hips and thighs and can hurt your back. But the abdominizer was designed by a doctor to create an automatic pelvic tilt, reduce the use of hip flexors, and place greater demand on the stomach muscles themselves. It's as close as science has come to the perfect sit-up, the streamlined super sit-up that delivers more benefits in less time than ever before. The patented abdominizer positions you perfectly for working the upper abdominals while cradling the lower back and cushioning the tailbone. Knees in like this work the lower abdominals. And this built-in rocker mechanism lets you exercise those hard-to-work lateral obliques. You know those love handles. Change hand positions for three different levels of abdominal action to get a firmer stomach in just minutes a day. The abdominizer really works for me. And it can work for you too. So if you're serious about your stomach, call toll free now. Over one million satisfied customers. To order your abdominizer, call 1-800-752-6800. That's 1-800-752-6800. Use your credit card to avoid COD charges or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Abdominizer. Department 108, Canton, Ohio, 44750. That's Abdominizer, Department 108, Canton, Ohio. But for faster service, call 1-800-752-6800. Father and daughter here at Stadium Bowl in Houston, Texas. Tracy Anthony and Earl Anthony. He is the winner of the $80,000 Hammer PBA Senior Open as he wins 258 to 189. Jamie Brooks with the check, John Wonders with the trophy, and we'll say so long from Stadium Bowl in Houston, Texas. Two round finals of the $80,000 Hammer PBA Senior Open have been brought to you by Midas and its dealers across the country. Nobody beats Midas, nobody. And by Olympic, the family of stain products that protect your home from damage rain can do. Olympic stops the rain.